And so if you're kind of like, if you're all to kind of pick what that is, what do we think it is that's kind of causing that disappearance of the excitement that was once there before? What would you say you think that is? Sure. I think for me, one of the things is that it generally feels rudderless right now. Like they don't, they don't really have an end game or like to, to, to what end are we going now? I feel like every phase of Marvel was kind of leading somewhere and that kind of built up some just general excitement and we got to enjoy the individual stories along the way. And I think now they're just like trying to hit beats almost like, oh, here's a character that you all like. Isn't that good enough now? And so I, I think rudderlessness is a big problem. It's like so many of these characters, like when are we going to see them again? Who are the current Avengers? Like we right. introduced characters back four years ago and we don't know when we will see them again. Yeah. You know, I think like the post credit scene thing was really like popularized by Marvel. And now it's almost like a, it's almost gimmicky because like there's all these, I only have to like remember, like there was something at the end of Eternals that was like pretty significant. And yeah, uh, Harry you know, Styles, like Harry oh, yeah. Styles is in the MCU. <laughs> Guys, that's, that's how they fix it. <laughs> Harry Styles, One Direction. There's also a giant hand coming out of yeah. half of the planet that they just don't address yeah, don't anymore, about. which seems like that would be a thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice tourist vacation spot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so and that's that's one of the big things. I know a lot of people, are, there's a lot of political stuff kind of involved, and I know that that's really fractured the fan base. I'm Typically, when I look at like how other people review movies, I'm a lot more forgiving about certain aspects, but I'm like, no, I, you know, you're right here. But I think you're maybe being a little too harsh in this regard. So I'm a little bit kind of softer in my reviews of some things, but there are some things I just can't like overlook. Um, so I know that a lot of the fan base is like, I feel like I'm forgotten. Like y'all don't, y'all don't even like me anymore. Did we not make this popular? So I know that that's a really big issue. It's a combination of things for me. So you look at like the golden age when all this stuff was firing on all cylinders. And what did we have? We had the Fox X-Men universe that was really unique and been doing a lot of interesting things. Some of my favorite comic book films of all time. Well, Disney acquired that what four or five years ago and have done dick with it since. You have the DC universe that's just had identity crisis the entire time. They try to be their own thing. A lot of us love it. Some of us didn't. Then they try to emulate Marvel. Some of us loved it. Some of us really didn't. And it's been just a juggle match of that. Now they're rebooting. And then the MCU is just, it was a problem of complacence because you think back to like the movie Whiplash, one of the best quotes in that movie from J.K. Simmons. One of the most detrimental things that you can say to somebody is good job. What did Disney and Marvel have said to them for 10 years? Good job, keep going. Nothing but positive reviews, nothing but uh, fresh Rotten Tomatoes scores. Even when the movies were mediocre, we were like, okay, it's still pretty good, keep going. And then they just never really had that challenge. They never had the competition from an X-Men universe that they bought or the DC universe that was always struggling for success to motivate them to keep doing better. They were just like, oh, you guys like that? Just don't take your foot off the gas, keep doing that. And after a while, that started to feel really stale for me and a lot of us. It's just we know what to expect with most of them now. When tying into several things you said there, we used to have DC, Fox, MCU. Mm -hmm. um, and even early MCU, Universal was tied to one and Paramount was tied to it. And then it was Disney. So different studios, different voices, different flavors. Now, Fox and all of that is under one umbrella, Disney. And there's just a certain sameness that comes along with that. They figured something out that was fantastic, but you don't want to eat the same meal over and over again. What's the thing you'd point to? Uh, yeah, piggybacking off that, I'm a big fan of less is more. Uh, I know it's it's fun to get like 30 movies in the same property, but typically you just see the, the coaster go down and never back up again. Um, devaluing the property is kind of a thing Disney's been doing across the board, and not only with the MCU, but Star Wars, we're seeing this. And I think it's just because they're burning all these shows out. It's like every week there's a new Marvel show or Star Wars, and they're trying to tie them into each other, and it's just too hard to keep track of. And again, if they were standalone, that's one thing, but these are all kind of married together, and it makes this ugly stew at the end where She-Hulk is part of the same universe now as I maybe Deadpool, I don't know, and the Marvels and Captain America, it's just too much. I don't care. And I've had this same conversation with so many people where I used to watch everything. I just can't keep up anymore. And it's compounded by every other, like every streaming service, every IP 
has so much stuff coming out. You can't keep up. Like people keep saying like, hey, Sean, are you going to watch The Boys? Hey, Sean, are you going to watch Invincible? Like, I want to. I just only have so much time. Why Too busy watching you watching She-Hulk everything. and doing theory videos. Watch it all. <laughs> I'm working on cloning technology, <laughs> and I'm hoping that will make the difference. No, yeah. So for me, I think that the copy paste formula with like DC, the DCU put out four movies last year. And to me, they were all pretty much the same plot. Uh, and then you look at the MCU and it's becoming homework for people. And that's a big problem when they're required to watch two MCU shows and three movies before they can understand the plot of something else. So I'd say that's a problem right now in terms of audiences wanting to go see the new comic book film and burnout. I think the burnout is real and the box office proved that last year, in my opinion, with the DCEU flops and also just the MCU underperforming. So, yeah. It's like Michael Keaton, the Batman of my youth. Yes. Ben Affleck and George Clooney. <laughs> Three Batman in one movie plus Supergirl. Like, Plus the, no the pre-release hype. Cared. No one no cared. One. It was crazy that that happened. All right, we wanted one more perspective on here. So if you can let us know who you are, where we can find you on the internet. Hey guys, what up? My name is Bevan. I'm from Beverages with Bevan on Tubi. That's a show where we toast and boast to our guest and their drink of choice. While I don't have a YouTube channel, I do write for Screen Crush. Uh, so I actually just wrote about this. Uh, it's called Why Disney is Failing. It oh, came out. We'll get there. First off, a little point of reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite comic book movie. Favorite comic book movie is, well, I thought we were starting with the first comic book movie oh, that, I saw. That too. That okay, great. First comic book movie I saw, Batman Returns. Been a that, lifelong Batman, Batman fan. Batman Returns. Well, listen, Kevin Conroy is still my Batman, but. Yes, mine too. There we go. We're going to get along. Favorite animated show of all time, Famous, Batman the Animated Series. Oh, God. Rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. Uh, favorite comic book movie? It kind of rotates, but for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to say today it's Guardians of the Galaxy. It's Great the first pick. one. The reason why is because I knew nothing about Guardians. I mm. never read the comics, but it did so well setting up these characters and the world that I cared. And I think that's the point of what I want to segue in is why is the comic book bubble bursting, and it's because the execution is just lacking. There is very little character development on these new characters that I don't have time to read all the comics in the world, so you need to set up the characters. You, I need to understand what they want and what they need to learn, and that that is a factor of why I think there's a lot of fatigue because there's no relatability. I'm not, I'm not attached to the character. I don't care if they win or lose because I don't know anything about them. We don't spend enough time with them. Like we don't spend enough time with Tony them. Stark. He's an Iron Man. Yep. He's an Incredible Hulk. Yep. He's an Iron Man two. Then he's an Avengers, and yep. then he's an Iron Man three. He's like five movies very early on. Shang Chi. When am I going to see him again? When, like, oh, that was cool. I enjoyed that movie. When am I going to see him again? When's yeah. he coming back? And the Eternals. Will we ever see them again? Like, we we don't spend any time with them to connect with them and. They're not building out kind of what that looks like. Honestly, Eternal should have been a Disney Plus series. Totally. I needed to understand who everybody was. There were so many characters. I wrote about this for Screen Crush. So many characters. I didn't have time to get attached to who they were and what they wanted because it's a good movie has your plot, which is the A plot of the story and a B plot, which is the character journey, what they need to learn, what they need to overcome. And that's what gets us attached for them to win in the A plot of the story. And that's just lacking. And mostly last year, Disney properties at whole, but just superheroes. 